Okay, so this lecture is all about how we go from DNA to proteins, because your DNA is basically, all it is, is an instruction to make proteins. That's what a gene is. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a protein. So we're going to follow some similar things that you've seen in the DNA replication um, lecture, which is this complementary base pairing. This is how a lot of it's going to work. So we're going to start off doing a kind of simple overview of um, gene expression. Gene expression is basically how do you express your genes into a protein. And then we'll talk about um, uh, the process in a little bit more detail. And then at the very end, we'll talk about mutations. And I'm going to kind of go through the slides as you've seen them, as you've got them in front of you. But I'll, I'll go through um, pretty quickly to skip um, some kind of more irrelevant stuff. But th what this slide is, is showing is an alligator that's got a mutation in the gene that codes for pigmentation. So it's an albino, it's, it's really cool, it's an albino um, alligator. I think it's an alligator or a crocodile. I, I can never remember the difference between the two. I'm pretty sure it's an alligator. But anyway, the gene that basically makes the protein that's responsible for putting pigment into this uh, the skin of this alligator is not working, it's broken. And you're going to see that the way it's broken is it's basically been a change in the DNA. And that leads to a different protein. And in this case, the protein is not working. Remember how we've talked about the sequence of amino acids determines the structure and therefore the function of the protein. Well, what determines the sequence of amino acids is the DNA. So if you change the DNA, you change the sequence of amino acids and you change the shape and therefore you change the function. All right, so that's what we've just talked about. What determines the function of a protein is the sequence of amino acids. The amino acids have little R groups on them and those R groups have particular um, chemical characteristics. So some are polar, some are non-polar, some are positive, some are negative, etc., etc. And so the positive and the negatives are going to attract. The polar are going to form a hydrogen bond between them. So if you change the order of amino acids, you're going to change, or the sequence of amino acids, you're going to change where those bonds can form, and that's going to change the shape of the protein. So these are these little um, groups here. So these are non-polar side chains. These polar side chains are going to be able to bond to each other. And these are positive and negative, and they're going to attract each other as well. All right, so make sure you're really, really clear on this, because this is a really kind of um, grounding principle from the whole course, which is this sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain, which is the chain of amino acids, is going to determine the shape of the protein, and that's going to determine its function. And a really, really good example of that is enzymes. Remember that the shape of the enzyme has an active site, and the active site is complementary to the substrate. So if you change the protein shape, you're going to change the active site shape. It's like changing the shape of a jigsaw puzzle, a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. You're not going to be able to fit that, that uh, substrate in anymore, and the enzyme won't be able to function. Now, what this lecture is all about is how the DNA determines the sequence of amino acids. So DNA here is made up of nucleotides. And these nucleotides, you remember, are their bases. They're adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And what's going to happen is that the order of those adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine is going to feed through this process of making our amino acids. And so in the end, you're going to be able to get your DNA and you're going to be able to go all the way through and determine what amino acids are going to be in what order based on that piece of DNA. All right, I'm saying the same thing over and over because it's super, super, super important. So this might not mean anything right now, but this is the process we're going to do. So this is DNA and DNA has nucleotides in it. These are bases, one, two, three four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. Adenine, thymine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, thymine, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we break our DNA up into little um, codes, 
like these three letter codes so adenine, thymine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, thymine, guanine, guanine, thymine. And each one of these three letter codes here is going to code for a particular amino acid. So in this case, TCT eventually feeds through and you're going to put this amino acid serine there. GGT means glycine eventually down the line. And so if you change this, maybe you change this to TGA, well that actually codes for stop code and you're going to, you're going to stop making your protein right there if this is changed. So if you change these three letters here, say change this to an A, you're not going to put glycine there anymore, you're going to put a different amino acid. So there are two main steps in gene expression, how you go from DNA to protein. The first one is transcription and the second one is translation. And I want you to think about these terms literally to try and help you remember what happens in them. So first, the DNA is in the nucleus and you've got all of these genes in the DNA. Now you don't want to make all of your genes at once into proteins. Let's say you're making growth hormone. Well you only want to make growth hormone when you actually want your cells to divide. You don't want to keep growing forever. Alright, so what's going to happen is that you're going to find the gene that says make growth hormone in here, in this DNA. And then you're going to copy that gene onto a piece of RNA, which is an, also a nucleic acid. But remember the difference between DNA and RNA is that RNA is single-stranded and DNA is double-stranded. Now, RNA also has uracil in it instead of thymine. So you're basically copying it out, the gene out, into a molecule that you can then say, right, I'm going to use this, but then I know it's not a piece of DNA. Because you don't want DNA floating around inside the cells. You, you want to control it. So the analogy for transcription is, imagine you don't have a copy of your biology textbook and you're doing this uh, lecture ready for an exam. So let's say your, your exam what you want to learn about is transcription. Well, you can't check the book out of the library because it's a reference copy. So that's like the same as the DNA staying in the nucleus. The DNA can't get out of the nucleus. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the chapter that talks about um, gene expression, and then you're going to find the section of the chapter that talks about transcription. And so that's the equivalent to like the gene. And then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to make a copy of that section of the textbook so you can then take it home. You're going to transcribe, write out the information from the textbook that you need so you can then take it home because the textbook has to stay in the library. Then the textbook stays in the library and your copy goes out of the library and goes home. And that's the analogy here. The RNA goes out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm so that it can then be translated into a protein. So translation is the step of going from RNA to your polypeptide chain. And when you translate something, well, translation to mean means to, for example, go from one language to another. And that makes sense here. We're going from a nucleic acid to an amino acid chain, a protein chain. So you're going from one type of biological molecule to another. The message is the same. This says put these amino acids in a particular order. So the language, what the language is saying is the same, but it's a different language. So transcription is copying the information from the DNA so you can then translate that piece of information into an amino acid chain, which is your, going to be your protein. All right, RNA is super, super important. We're going to encounter several types of RNA. The main two we're going to encounter are messenger RNA and tRNA, transfer RNA. All right, so transcription. We're going to copy the gene within the DNA. We're going to open up our DNA and we're going to find that gene that we want to make. We're going to transcribe onto a piece of messenger RNA and we're going to make our protein from. So let's say it's the gene that causes a growth hormone to be made. Okay, so it's the instructions to basically put your amino acids in a particular order so that when those amino acids fold up, you've got growth hormone. 
okay, not a different type of protein, but growth hormone specifically. So you're going to transcribe, copy that gene in the DNA for growth hormone onto a piece of messenger RNA. So messenger RNA takes the message, which is the instructions to make that growth hormone protein, the sequence of amino acids, the order that makes that growth hormone, going to put it onto messenger RNA and then that's going to go out of the nucleus, go into the cytoplasm to the ribosomes. Now remember the ribosomes are what are going to actually make your protein. So the ribosome then translates that piece of messenger RNA into the sequence of amino acids and the particular sequence is determined by this messenger RNA. Okay, so you're going to translate Alright, so that's that step there. We're changing in language. I'm going to go through these steps and watch some videos. Alright, so transcription. There's several things going on. So you have two pieces of DNA, right? Two strands of DNA which are stuck together by hydrogen bonds. One goes 5' prime to 3' prime, one goes um, 5' prime to 3' prime this other way here. And you're going to read something called the template strand. You're not going to read the coding strand, you're going to read the template strand. Okay, I know this is confusing, but the template is what you're going to use as like a as a template to make your messenger RNA. Alright. So this molecule here, RNA polymerase. Let's think about what this is. Well, it's an enzyme because it says ASE at the end. And it's something to do with RNA, and it says polymerase, so polymer, it's going to make, it's an enzyme that's going to make a polymer of RNA. So RNA polymerase is going to make this piece of messenger RNA here. Note that, remember in um, DNA replication, it was helicase that unzipped the DNA. Well, that's not what's going to happen here. RNA polymerase is going to unzip the DNA. It's just going to be able to do that at the same time that it makes its messenger RNA. So you don't need an extra little enzyme to unzip the DNA. RNA polymerase is going to do that. All right. So the gene is copied onto messenger RNA because you need to keep all of your DNA in the nucleus. And ribosomes aren't in the nucleus, and ribosomes make proteins. So the messenger RNA needs to get to where the ribosomes are, which are on the outside of the nucleus, floating around in the cytoplasm and on your rough ER. And so that's the equivalent of you copying that bit of information from the biology textbook and taking it to where you're going to study, which is going to be at home. All right. You can also make um, loads of proteins from one gene at the same time. If you just use your one piece of DNA, well, then you're just going to have to just use make one protein at once, and that's super, super slow. Your, your body doesn't work that way. You need to be able to make lots and lots of protein, so you can make loads and loads of um, messenger RNA. It's the equivalent of there being... Um, imagine you couldn't make a photocopy of the biology textbook, and there was only one textbook, and everyone had to use it. Well, then only one person could use it at once, and it would be super slow. You'd all have to share it. But in this case, it's like having a photocopier. You can, you can copy that section over and over and over again. You just give a photocopy to everyone so everyone can use it at the same time. All right. Now, remember complementary base pairing. This is all we're going to do. We're going to do exactly the same thing. So remember when we made more DNA, what you did is you unzipped the DNA, and then wherever you had like an A, you stuck on like a T. And whenever you had like a G, you stuck on a C. So here's a template strand down here. Look at where my mouse pointer is. And you're going to read this template strand. You're going to use this as a template to make your messenger RNA. And this is why the coding strand is called the coding strand, because it's like the code. It's like a copy of what the messenger RNA ends up being. So you're going to unzip the DNA. Here's the gene here. And you're going to copy that gene by complementary base pairing. And you're probably thinking, well, then it's not a copy, it's, it's the opposite. Well, actually, when you then go to make your protein, you're going to then flip this back again in transfer RNA. OK, 
okay? And the message is the same. It's just kind of like as a kind of like a code. It's almost like you've got a code. So here you've got a T and you're gonna stick an A there, and it's gonna be when we're making our messenger RNA. Here you've got an A next, but remember the RNA has uracil and not thymine. So now you're gonna put a uracil. Now you've got a C, so you're going to put a G. You've got a T, so you've got to put an A, etc., etc. And you're going to keep going until you get to the end of the gene. And there are particular sequences here, TAC codes for AUG. And AUG actually happens to be what's called a start codon. And at the end, you'll have a stop codon. So they're basically ways of saying this is the start of the gene, this is the end of the gene. The way you can remember a start codon is that school starts in August, AUG. All right. Uh, up here, these are all the also some names that are given to this strand here, and here are some names that are given to this strand. You may encounter these. I'm just telling you them so that you're aware of it. For all intents and purposes, for for this class, learn template and coding. All right. So this is transcription. We're going to transcribe the gene. We're going to copy the gene into messenger RNA and the way that's going to work is that we're going to use complementary base pairing. So at the start of the gene you're going to unzip the gene and then let's say this is where we're going to start copying. You've got a C so you're going to in your first nucleotide in your messenger RNA you're going to put a G. Next one here is a G on the DNA on the template strand and so that's going to go to a C in your messenger RNA. Next is T. So you've got an A in your messenger RNA, etc., etc. Notice that whenever you've got an A, you're not going to have a T, you're going to have a U, because the difference between RNA and DNA is that RNA has uracil and DNA has thymine. All right. Now let's look at the messenger RNA and compare it to the DNA. Well, it's just the complementary strand. It's, it's the same, it's saying the same thing, it's just saying it kind of backwards. And so you can flip it back around again when you actually need to use this as the message, which is what we're going to do when we talk about transfer RNA. All right, so let's make our messenger RNA sequence. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can do that. I want you to get, so this is transcription here, I want you to try and make the piece of messenger RNA from this gene here. So pause the video now and have a go. Alright, so first you've got two pieces of DNA and you're like, which one are we going to use? Because they're going to say different things. Remember, we're going to use the template strand as our template to make our messenger RNA. So we're going to make the messenger RNA on here. Whenever we've got a T, we're going to put an A. Whenever we've got an A, remember instead of a T, we're going to have a U. Instead of a C here, we're going to have a G. Okay, so there's our piece of RNA. So this is our transcript here, our RNA. And the next step is going to translate this piece of messenger RNA into our protein. Remember, you're going from a different language now. You're going from nucleic acid to a protein. You need to translate it. All right, so translation is the next one. You're going from one language to another. It's saying the same thing. It's like if I go from English to Spanish, I'm saying the same thing. It's just that the, the language is different. And so try and see it like that. Now, when we read our messenger RNA, we're going to read it in blocks of three. Every three nucleotides is going to mean one amino acid and it's called a codon. So the codon is found in the messenger RNA and this is really really important that you know where the codon is because it's the codons that we read to then determine which amino acid it is. We don't read the DNA, we don't read something called the transfer RNA, we read the messenger RNA. So if I ask you to go from a sequence of messenger RNA to an amino acid sequence, you're going to want to look at the messenger RNA. Not the DNA, not the transfer RNA, but the messenger RNA. Now what happens is we have a molecule called transfer RNA, and transfer RNA, it's like, 
it, again, it's complementary to the messenger RNA. So it looks exactly the same, actually, as the DNA. The only difference is it's got uracil instead of thymine. So you've got these transfer RNA molecules, and every transfer RNA has three um, nucleotides on it. And those three nucleotides are going to match up with our codon. If I go back, remember that I said we read our nucleotides on our messenger RNA in sets of three. So if we have AUG, for example, in our messenger RNA, so AUG, we're going to go U, um, A, C. I'm trying to do it in my head. It's hard if I don't write it down. That's what the transfer RNA will be that will dock with that, that those three nucleotides, like codon on the messenger RNA. And that particular sequence on the transfer RNA codes for a particular amino acid. If you have a different sequence, you're going to have a different amino acid docking. And we're going to watch some videos, so it's going to make a lot more sense when you can actually visually see it. All right, so the transfer RNA, each one has a different three-letter code on it. Say like uh, C, um, U, uh, A. And that CUA is going to code for one of the 20 amino acids. Every CUA codes for the same amino acid. If you have a different code there, you're going to get a different amino acid. And hopefully you're starting to see now how the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA determines the sequence of nucleotides in the messenger RNA, which is going to determine which order the transfer RNAs come in, which is going to determine the sequence of amino acids. And if you, don't, if you can't see that right now, that's fine. We're going to watch some videos. So, three nucleotides, one codon on the messenger RNA, remember the codons are on the messenger RNA, are going to match with what's called the anticodon on the transfer RNA. So, anti, think of opposite, it basically is the opposite of the codon. And that is going to code for one amino acid. Alright, so this is a picture of it, hopefully this is going to make more sense. So, here is our messenger RNA here, and here is the ribosome. And the ribosome is what makes the um, protein, and the way it makes the protein is by reading this messenger RNA like a like a book, like a series of letters. So every three on here is going to code for three nucleotides on our transfer RNA, and it happens that U U U codes for lysine. If this didn't say A A A and said something else, well then it would bring in a different amino acid because you, you, you wouldn't match up with it. Let's say this was A, T, sorry, not T, it can't be T, remember there's no T in messenger RNA, see I'm doing it now. If this said A, um, U, A, well then this would say U, A, U, and, and lysine wouldn't be on that, it would be a different amino acid. See how these are different three codes and they've got different amino acids, okay? All right, so trips in here, it's ACC that is um, going to code for trypsin, or rather here, UGG. So wherever you've got UGG, the transfer RNA that corresponds to that, which is ACC, is going to come in and, and bind to here. And it's going to bring in whichever amino acid is coded for, which in this case happens to be trypsin. All right, so here the next one is UUG. So the complementary, the anticodon to that is AAG. So UUC, AAG, and that's phenylalanine, I think. I can never say that one. All right. So again, we're going to watch some videos. It's all about this complementary base pairing. You're just going flipping between these codes by going, you know, A to U. And back here, the DNA, well, that would have said T. All right, so this is the whole thing. Don't get overwhelmed. Let's just look at this first bits here. So a triplet is a set of three in your DNA. Here's your DNA here. So the DNA goes T, A, C, G, G, T. And we're going to read them in sets of three. And notice how we read them in sets of three. It's three, and then another three, and then another three. What we don't do, we can't read like A, C, G. That won't make sense. We, we read them in sets of three. 
All right, so the messenger RNA here that corresponds, when you've got a T here, you're going to have an A. When you've got an A there, you're going to have a U. When you've got a C there, you're going to have a G. So this is our messenger RNA. So we make our messenger RNA via complementary base pairing from the DNA. Then this messenger RNA goes to the ribosome. And what happens with the ribosome is it's going to read the messenger RNA and it's going to then find, or where in the cytoplasm there's going to be these transfer RNAs, and the transfer RNAs that correspond to the set of three, as the ribosome reads it, is, are going to come in. So the ribosome is going to read this, AUG, and then it's going to find the transfer RNA that complements that, that can dock with it. So these come in like, and then they dock here. So UAC matches up with AUG. All right, and that's uh, methionine, which is, a, which is always the start. Now you've got CCA. And so the tRNA, the anticodon, this is the codon here, the anticodon is going to be GGU, and GGU codes for proline. Only proline, nothing else. So serline is AGC, and so if you go back, you'll see UCG. Now what I want you to do now is I want you to look really closely at the first like six of the tRNA, and then look at the DNA and see how they compare. So pause it and compare the DNA and the tRNA. All right, so hopefully you've noticed that the tRNA is the DNA. It's the same thing. The only difference is that whenever you've got a thymine in the DNA, you've got a uracil in the RNA. Because remember, we're trying to keep DNA and RNA separate. You don't want these floating around in the cytoplasm, you know, pretending to be DNA. All right. So if I give you DNA and I say, what's the, t what's the tRNA? You don't actually need to go messenger RNA and then tRNA. If you just know that the tRNA is going to look exactly the same as the DNA, apart from it's going to have uracil instead of thymine. Okay. All right, so DNA is made of these strands of nucleotides, and every three nucleotides is going to code for one of the 20 amino acids. So on DNA, we have a triplet, the messenger RNA, we have a codon, and then the anticodon is on the transfer RNA, and we always read in sets of three. We take the first three, and then we go to the next three, and then we go to the next three, etc., etc. And this is what we have. We've worked this out. This is on the messenger RNA. Really, really important. Write this down. Whenever I give you this, if I give you this in a piece of DNA or whatever, you're going to look at the messenger RNA. So ignore the transfer RNA, ignore the DNA. If you want to find out where which amino acids go where, look at the messenger RNA. So if you look at the messenger RNA and it says, for example, um, CAG, well, what you do is you go to the first nucleotide, which is C, and then the next one, so you go along, and then you find A. The second one is A, so C, A, and then G. Okay, so this is going to be the amino acid that's coded for in that messenger RNA. All right, so you can work out how many amino acids does this gene code for. Um, you can pause it if you want. I'll just tell you the answer. Okay, so we're going to read here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve amino acids in that gene. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but basically think of DNA like a language. So like there are, it's either 24 or 26, I always forget, letters in the alphabet. Um, and so there's only 20, there's only a small number. I always forget which one it is. I think it's 26. Let's say it's 26. So basically you, you've not got very many um, different individual kind of units. So like if you look at um, DNA, you've only got C, G, T and A. But the important thing is the order. So think about all the different languages that use the Roman kind of the, the letters like A, B, C, D. 
think about how many different words there are in all those languages, even though you've only got that limited number of letters. And so it's all about the order that you put the letters in that basically gives you an unlimited amount of information that you can code for. So it's exactly the same as DNA. All right. I'm saying all the same thing here, what I just said. Don't worry about it. Okay. So complementary base pairing, super, super important. Really, 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 really important. It's how the whole thing works. So you're going to go to DNA. You're going to open the DNA. You're going to find the template strand. You're going to copy that template strand into messenger RNA down here via complementary base pairing. Then when the ribosome reads the um, messenger RNA, again, complementary base pairing is going to come in because the transfer RNA is going to dock with the messenger RNA and bring in the right amino acid. Right, I want you to watch this video. I'm just going to play it on here if it lets me. Um, so you can just watch it within this video or you can uh, click on the link and watch it. Here is a cell, the basic unit of all living tissue. In most human cells, there is a structure called a nucleus. The nucleus contains the genome. In humans, the genome is split between 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a long strand of DNA, tightly packaged around proteins called histones. I think she's English, isn't she? Like me. Within the DNA are sections called genes. These genes contain the instructions for making proteins. When a gene is switched on, an enzyme called RNA polymerase attaches to the start of the gene. It moves along the DNA, making a strand of messenger RNA out of free bases in the nucleus. The DNA code determines the order in which the free bases are added to the messenger RNA. This process is called transcription. Before the messenger RNA can be used as a template for the production of proteins, it needs to be processed. This involves removing and adding sections of RNA. The messenger RNA then moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Protein factories in the cytoplasm, called ribosomes, bind to the messenger RNA. The ribosome reads the code in the messenger RNA to produce a chain made up of amino acids. There are 20 different types of amino acid. Transfer RNA molecules carry the amino acids to the ribosome. The messenger RNA is read three bases at a time. As each triplet is read, a transfer RNA delivers the corresponding amino acid. This is added to a growing chain of amino acids. Once the last amino acid has been added, the chain folds into a complex 3D shape to form the protein. Okay. You also have a link for an Amoeba Sisters video here. This is a really good video. Again, I recommend that you watch it. I recommend that you go back and watch that other video loads of times. The process is pretty simple. We're going to go into more detail, but the, the process is simple once you understand it. That all you're doing is kind of flipping backwards and forwards between these um, different molecules. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to work this out. And the answers are going to be on the next slides. You can download the PowerPoint and look at the answers. Um, and I'll click through them as well. But I want you to try this. Just try the first like six or something. I know this is really long. So as long as you've done the first six, that's fine. So write the messenger RNA for this piece of DNA, assuming that this is the template strand. Now write the transfer RNA code for the piece of messenger RNA that you just made. And you can remember, you can make a shortcut if you remember the relationship between DNA and, and transfer RNA. 
All right, now um, here's a different DNA code, and I want you to write down, um, sorry, this is a, a transfer RNA molecules. I want you to write the DNA code. And then find the amino acid sequence. So remember, the amino acid sequence, we look at the codons. So the codons are on the messenger RNA. So you need to work out the messenger RNA. And then if you go in your textbook or just Google it, um, codon chart, you will get the chart for all the amino acids and which amino acid corresponds with which codon. Remember, you're looking at the codon. You're not looking at the DNA. You're not looking at the transfer RNA. You're looking at the codon. All right, so pause it. Have a really good go. I'm going to ask you to do this in the exam, so you might as well practice now. All right, so here is the uh, messenger RNA for the piece of DNA. So let's just look at the first, like, six or whatever. So when you've got an A, you're going to put a U. Whenever you've got a T, you're going to put an A. Whenever you're going to put a G, you're going to put a C. Whenever you've got an A, you're going to put a U, etc., etc. So remember, if this was DNA uh, replication, we we're making more DNA, we would put a thymine, okay, instead of a uracil. But remember, we're making messenger RNA, we're making RNA, and the difference between DNA and RNA is that RNA has got uracil in it. All right, the transfer RNA from this piece of messenger RNA, well, again, we flip back. Whenever you've got a uracil, you're going to put adenine. Whenever you've got adenine, you're going to put uracil, not thymine, uracil. Whenever you've got cytosine, you're going to put guanine, etc., etc. Now, the codon, remember the codons are the sets of three in here, the messenger RNA. So here's one codon, then this is the next one, then this is the next one. And so this is what you're going to read when you look at that codon chart to find the amino acid. So if you want to find out the first amino acid for this gene, you're not going to look at AUG, you're going to look for UAC in that chart. And then DNA. Now, if you wanted to, you could have gone messenger RNA and then back to DNA. So you could have gone instead of uracil, you're going to have an adenine, and then you go from adenine to thymine. Or you can just remember that the relationship between tRNA, so T, not messenger, but tRNA, and DNA is that they're exactly the same, it's just in the RNA, you've got a uracil instead of thymine. Right, then find the amino acid sequence. Well, okay, then you, now you have to go to the messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA for UAC is going to be AUG. So look, AUG and that's methionine. This one is serine, glycine, etc., etc. Notice that if this was a different code, for example, if this was G. C A, well G C A if I go back here, that's alanine, so you put alanine here instead. Alanine would have a different R group on than serine, and therefore when this amino acid sequence folds up into a protein, the bond that would form here is not going to form here, a different bond is going to form, or no bond at all. And so that is why this sequence of amino acids is going to determine the shape of the protein, it determines where the bonds are, and therefore the shape of the protein which determines the function. So if you have a mistake in your DNA, if you've got a mutation here in your DNA, you're going to put a different amino acid there, and that, that is how a mutation leads to often a non-functioning protein. It doesn't fold up into the right shape, and therefore it doesn't work. And there are different types of mutations. Some are a lot more serious than others, and we'll get to that right at the very end. All right, have a go at these answers to these questions as well. Pause the video and have a think, and then we'll talk about it. All right, so can transcription and translation of the same piece of messenger RNA happen in the same place at the same time? In eukaryotic cells, no, because transcription, well, that's copying the DNA. Where is the DNA? It's in the nucleus. Where does translation happen? That's making the sequence of amino acids, the polypeptide chain from the messenger RNA, that happens in the ribosomes. The ribosomes are outside of the nucleus. However, in prokaryotes, they don't have a nuclear membrane. They just have the DNA floating around randomly in the cytoplasm. And so, yes, you can translate messenger RNA and transcribe it at the same time, which is really cool, and I've got a picture later on. So it's not the same for all living things. Does translation require energy? Yes, it does. It requires making a bond, a polypeptide chain, You've got a peptide bond in between 
those amino acids and that requires energy. Remember, it is dehydration th synthesis. All right, so I'm going to stop this video here. This is part one. I'm going to stop this here, and then in part two, we're going to go over transcription and translation in more details. We're going to look at the molecules involved and, and go into this in a little bit more detail because it is a little bit more complex than just simply copying stuff.